Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. Today, we got a Watch Mojo video, and this one is... 20 times YouTubers got arrested. We got to have to fail who it is, and why they got arrested. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment your take down below. Let's go! For all you parents who are deeply offended by the fact of Rocco being in the back of the truck, I'm sorry. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down. Can I just say, um, I don't know if it, like, who's the, this, there's something about this child that doesn't sit right with me. Like, the way he's laying here just looks off to me. In the back of the truck, I'm sorry. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times YouTubers got arrested. I'll miss you, Alexia. Uh, J Station. You ignorant little fuck. Oh, I don't like you. I've heard enough about you to know why I don't like you. Oh, I hate. Oh, no. I know you're in a better place right now. For this list, we'll be looking at online creators that have been detained or charged with various crimes. Which YouTuber do you think committed the wildest crime? Let us know in the comments below. Okay, I'm gonna assume you're not accusing any, like they're not counting people who've like gone to jail for actual murder or shit. I'm gonna assume. Number 20, Ross Creations, Leapfrogging. In 2013, YouTuber Ross Creations landed in hot water after he performed what he thought was an innocent prank. He essentially flipped over a couple of police officers sitting on a picnic table, which led them to warning him that they wouldn't hesitate to arrest him if he did it again. Things only got worse when the officers noticed Charles Ross was filming, after which they attempted to delete Ross's video, ending in a physical brawl between them and the YouTuber. Once the dust settled, the prankster had been arrested and charged with a misdemeanor for negligence. However, despite the response from the cops, many viewers were on Ross's side. Yeah, of course so Ross, he didn't actually do anything. So he flipped over them, which is probably weird and probably should not be done. Technically, he didn't do anything. He flipped over them. He landed perfectly fine on his feet. Um, what did the cop say to him afterwards? Hold on. I, I'm trying to remember what he said. Like, he, th he did some... Like, this isn't... This should not be... Next time you do this, I'm a something you... F in, and then freaking neck. Which makes me believe I'm gonna, cause they look, cause if it's these days, I'm gonna say the swear words. But like this will take these guys went way too. The police went too far here. Yeah, no wonder they're on this side. This went way. These you, these police took it way way too far here. Response from the cops. Many viewers were on Ross's side, Agreed. saying that do. the stunts may have been annoying but not deserving of being arrested. The charge he didn't make no death because he didn't actually commit a crime was ultimately dismissed. Of course, because he didn't actually do anything. And they dropped the charges because it was my first offense for anything. Number 19, Hayes Greer, alleged assault and robbery. Well, I mean. This one probably has some con more concreteness to it. Former Vine star Hayes Greer, who was once known for being the youngest male contestant on Dancing with the Stars, harmed his reputation after being arrested in 2021. According to the allegations, Greer had seriously injured someone and had apparently stolen their expensive phone. There were even allegations. Okay, so the way this is being worded makes me seem like I. Is there not concrete proof of this? I guess obviously it's allegedly has to just be used, the words used, but like... Was there evidence and was he like actually found guilty of it? 
allegations that the assault caused the victim to develop brain damage. And Hayes Greer faces three Ooh. felony charges, that, including assault. If that's true, that's that that's 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 messed up because that's a big assault. Like that's a physical assault for someone to cause brain damage from it. That ain't just no light push. That's that's a a bad brawl fall and a bad beating that took place then for that to happen. Causing serious bodily harm. However, despite the injuries, a judge couldn't discern who was at fault for the fight due to both people being intoxicated. Additionally, the robbery charges were dropped after it was revealed the phone was returned. While he may not have seen legal repercussions, there was certainly damage to his career. He I mean, what do you mean by the phone? Like, was the phone returned by him? That doesn't undo the robbery. If I break into someone's house and steal something and then bring it back, that doesn't undo the... You can't just say, oh, well, I can't charge him with robbery. He brought it back. Because I still broke in and I still robbed the thing. I still robbed the person. That's weird. Um, when it comes to assault... I mean, that one's fair. The judge is fair there. He's like, listen, you both were drunk. You're both a drunkish. I don't know who instigated it. Neither of you two, just, you two are blaming each other because you two are just going to do. No one's gonna take responsibility. I, I can't, he can't rule on it. Uh, but yeah, all no matter what, once you're accused of something in the world of public eye, you are immediately just thrown to the wolves. He didn't post. And even if you're in, even if you're innocent, guilty to everyone else. Post on YouTube again for over a year after the event, took a hit to his popularity, and as of May 2023, he hasn't posted an update in that same year. Big closeouts, boys. Till next time. Number 18. Jack Galinsky. Shoplifting. This incident proves that even accidents don't exempt people from consequences. Jack Galinsky of Jack and Jack learns that firsthand after being accused of theft in 2016. The YouTuber turned Viner had claims that he didn't realize he had walked out without paying. You're gonna cop a charge, bro. While he tried paying for it after realizing his mistake, the staff still called security to investigate. Galinsky's collaborator, Jack Johnson, captured the whole event via Snapchat. This is the way this is sound made me sound like this was like a prick. Cause clearly, there's no way you just don't know you didn't pay. You that doesn't you don't just not know you paid, not know you didn't pay. You know you didn't pay when you walked out of there. really happening. The recordings also showcased how both creators found the situation funny at first, until they realized that the perpetrator would actually be facing consequences. Galinsky also controversially offered to pay more than the article of clothing was worth. Dude offered to pay you triple? Just let him go. He was arrested and released on bail, although later he had to attend a court date for the crime. Just pay Galinsky's bail. Should be like 10 minutes till he's out. Number 17. Stokes Twins. Fake bank robbery. You well, I mean, you deserve to go to prison for this one. YouTubers Alan and Alex Stokes decided to commit a prank where they would pretend to rob a bank. A stance on this level is already... Bro, do you not understand that if you actually tried to do this, your ass could die from this? Like, if someone... You walked in there, there is a possibility this goes horribly wrong. You need to understand this. Don't do this shit because the word prank's there. You're like, oh, it's fine because it's a prank. Don't do that. Just because it's a prank, just because you put the word prank in front of it in your mind doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it okay then. It doesn't mean that no one can get mad at you. It doesn't mean you're exempt from the law. Like... Just don't do it. Pretty risky enough. The twins took it to a whole new level when they roped in an innocent Uber driver who had guns drawn on him by officers that believed he was helping them with their alleged crime. 
The craziest part is they played this prank twice on the same day after already having been detained and released by officers from another jurisdiction. What? <laughs> okay, that's stupid. Send them to jail. Actually send these two to jail. They are actually imbeciles. This is, this is idiot at its new level. I have seen some idiots. This is next level. This is a gift. This is a gift type of stupid. This is the type of thing that needs to be, this is the type of stupid that needs to be studied. That's what this is. This needs to be, this stupidity needs to be commended almost on how stupid it is and how dipshitted these two are. How do you get detained from one jurisdiction of police and actually think in your head your response to being released and almost charged is, oh, we should go do that again somewhere else. This is, th these, this is imbecile at a new level right here. They were arrested the second time and were charged with reporting false emergencies and false imprisonment. And they are each charged with one felony. They deserve it. They absolutely, I'm sorry, they absolutely deserve this. Count of false imprisonment. However, they were able to escape jail time and were instead sentenced to over 100 hours of community service and restitution payment. They just, they, they, they should have gone to jail. I'm sorry, they should have gone to jail. That's, they, they're, they're dipshits for this. I just didn't expect this to actually happen. Number 16, Mona Lisa Perez, Encyclopedic Stump. This entire thing is stupid. This is stupidity human beings at a whole new level. I, I, literally, I'm sorry. I'm going to be the man. I think they have a child, and that's the only person I feel sympathetic for here. Is the child. I might be wrong in that, and it may not have a child, but I believe they had a child. I might have read that, and I might, oh, I might be wrong. I might be making stuff up, but pretty sure they did. Either way, I have no sympathy for these two. I have no sympathy for the guy, because this guy is an actual idiot for thinking this would, is a good idea. I have no sympathy for the woman, because the woman went along with it. At no point did she refuse to do this. She went along with it the whole time. This is just, it was, this was a bad idea. It was a bad idea. It was a dumb idea. They should have known better. They're smart. These are, they, they are adults. They are at least old enough to know better. This is, this, it's just stupid. These two are stupid. Let's go ahead and uh, show them what we have in store for our first video. In 2017, YouTuber Mona Lisa Perez and her boyfriend decided to film a video where they tested if a bullet could pierce through an encyclopedia. While Perez hadn't wanted to go through with the stunt, her boyfriend insisted that she go through with it. Babe, I'm not doing this. I can't. Unfortunately, she listened, which... That's what I'm saying. This is what the issue is. is she, she just took it. She went with it. She just, all she needed to say was, I'm not doing this. You're going, you could die. I'm not doing it. But you didn't listen. You went along. You listened. You pay the consequences for your actions. There's two consequences you paid for your actions. He paid the consequence because he's dead. He's dead. All the consequences he paid, she paid the consequence of one being, of killing a man. And having that on her conscience, and then she got to jail for it for fucking murder. Ultimately led to his unfortunate death. The worst part is that the couple had children that were also impacted by this event. Yep. Oh yeah, the children are completely but they have no they have no father anymore. Uh because of this action, and they have no mother because the mother's going to jail. The only people I feel sympathetic for are the kids, because they had nothing to do with this. They just lost both their parents be for no reason. A reason that did not need to happen. This did not need to happen. Oh, this one makes me mad because it's so... Literally... Guy almost felt like he... Like the guy put his life on a wrist just to get some views. Like, this is ridiculous. Despite the death being accidental, she was still charged with manslaughter oh, yeah. and sentenced to about six months in jail. What? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's fucking it? I'm sorry. I know it was an accident. But six months, that's it? 
feel like you're gonna go longer than that. I'm just, I... I thought the reason, I thought the woman, at least, would have been in jail for some years. Cause she, this, this was negligent and ignorant and stupid at a whole different level. Six fucking months, that's it. I may fail, but if I fail, I want to die trying. Number 15, Andre Push, alleged whistleblower. Andre Push was mostly known for his videos where he would explore abandoned properties. His type of content was already risky enough, as accessing classified deserted buildings can be considered trespassing. No one could have anticipated what would actually get the popular influencer in trouble. Essentially, between 2018 and 2020, Pish discovered plans for facilities that were supposedly being built in Moscow. After finding these plans, he then shared them with various people in Ukraine. Once Push was found out, Let's dissect this. We're gonna dissect this one. So, this YouTuber found uh, documents for uh, documents that say secrets. I think something about buildings or something like that. I didn't fully hear. But he apparently gave information about these secrets in these documents to people in Ukraine. You goddamn right your ass is gonna, if you actually did that, you goddamn right your ass is about to be fucking arrested. What the hell were you thinking? If you have these documents itself, you hide these things. Don't ever let anyone know you have these documents. Don't go telling Ukraine, that's gonna cause major problems for you. You're lucky you're just arrested for that. He was swiftly arrested. The creator was found guilty of spreading state secrets and subsequently sentenced to five years in prison. Number 14, Daniel Silva, murder. After celebrating his 25th birthday, popular influencer Cory Labarry trusted his friend and fellow star Daniel Silva to drive him home. However, Silva was intoxicated and lost control of the car, hitting several things. Both men were injured. Silva attempted to flee the scene and was only stopped by Good Samaritans who happened to be nearby. Police say they expect to make an arrest. Labari later passed away to the dismay of his fans and loved ones. That dismay turned to anger when Silva published an apology video, wherein fans of Labari claimed he lied about attempting to leave. I know I'm not the type of person that would leave a friend in a situation like that. This led to You motherfucker. You made an. You drove a car drunk with your friend in it. You crashed into a bus thing because your ass was drunk. Your ass then got them killed. And in your video, your apology video for it, you give shit to the guy who died because he claiming he lied, saying you he left. You are a heinous human being. A, a, a heinous human being. Oh, I don't like you at all. Swift calls for justice, and he was ultimately charged with manslaughter. However, he only received a short prison sentence, probation, and community service, which further angered those who felt he deserved a harsher punishment. We are absolutely he fucking. It killed a man. His his negligence killed a man. Now, it's hard to... The man didn't deserve to die. But he also trusted his friend who was clearly drunk in driving a car. I don't care who you're friends with. If your friend is drunk, also, 
Don't get in a vehicle with them and let them drive either. Don't put your life there. Just get a tab. Just get a get, leave your vehicle. Just get a cab. If this guy cho try to get him in the cab too. If a friend don't want to get in the cab, can leave the friend and let him deal with his own shit. But like. Daniel will always strive to live up to his dearest friend's memory. I hate these people so much right now. We're so grateful that Daniel has been granted the opportunity of probation in this case and has been spared a state prison sentence. Number 13, Callum McSwift. I actually hate this guy, that guy. I hate the fact that he's trying to act like some freaking, like he's so heartbroken. That's killed his friend. I bet he bought, it does have some heartbreak all the fact his friend died except his apology didn't make it seem like that we're still gonna give shit to the guy wigan fake gay club assault in 2016 popular lgbtq plus youtuber callum mcswiggan was arrested after being found vandalizing a car he claimed that he was doing it after having been assaulted for his sexuality while this initially drew outrage from his supporters the police were quick to release their side of things Apparently, the visible injuries McSwiggan had weren't due to an attack prior to the vandalism. He had actually been seen beating himself with a payphone, posting the self-inflicted injuries as proof following his arrest. react to this oh my god so this guy this fucking guy i'm sorry for my sense of swearing so much it's just jesus stuff like this gets me enraged so this guy uh was breaking a window of a car and then uh police were going to charge him i think or found him later on and charged him and uh before then, he was seen beating himself with a payphone. The reason he was beating himself with a payphone is so that when he got to jail and got went and also went to the hospital, he could take a photo and say he was beaten up for being gay. That's wrong. Because there are actual assaults that happen, and there are actual people whose lives are taken just for being gay. Being part of the L. Oh god, I gotta make sure I say this correct. I don't. LGBTQ. I think I got that right. Sorry, I'm not exactly good with remembering that. So I wanna make sure I got that right. But if you're part of that community, you, there are people who are assaulted. There are stories of them, people being killed for this, that. There was issues now, th this f day and age, in 2023, for fucking trans people to, like, people cause things that trans people should be fucking killed and shit like that. And this guy, I know this isn't recent. This isn't like a thing that happened this year. But this guy using his sexuality and him being claiming he assaulted him when he clearly did it, and it was he fakes an assault just to get sympathy on himself. That's fucking sickening to me. But investigators say those injuries were self-inflicted and point to this booking photo of McSwiggin taken after the alleged attack. After this was revealed, McSwiggin admitted the stitches to his head were his own fault, but stuck to the claim that he was attacked by three people. He was denounced by several members of the LGBTQ community, receiving probation, and was made to complete anger management class. Yeah, people from that community should be mad at him. That is sickening the way he did that. And on Facebook today, McSwiggin admitted that he did hit himself in the face with a payphone. Number 12, Herman Abraham Loera Acosta, Kidnapping. When a popular motivational YouTuber named Herman Abraham Loera Acosta was suddenly accused of kidnapping, his fans were understandably confused, as they only knew him as someone who gave positive life advice. However, his crime was darker than anyone could have guessed. 
He, along with several others, captured a lawyer and held her in a rented house for days, demanding several millions of pesos in Bitcoin for her safe release. Luckily, she was rescued after a few days, and the former YouTuber was arrested and sentenced to 50 years in prison. This guy's fucked up. This guy is legitimately as fucked up as it gets. We might find more. There's still more to go. But this guy's sitting there. Him and a few people kidnapped a lawyer. It's a 33 year old lawyer. Forces her into a car, drives her out, brings her to a rental house, and holds her there hoping they get big amount of money in Bitcoin for her release. Why is everyone so care about Bitcoin? Fuck Bitcoin. But anyways. This man deserves to go there 50 years. That's, that's fucking fine. Get, get him out of the fucking streets. For kidnapping. Good. Number 11. Gas Kings. Scamming the elderly. Oh, that's just wrong. Oh, that's just wrong. Don't skip. Fucking hell, that's just... Oh, I don't... Oh, you... Piece of shit. Another YouTuber with a GTR with an R35, the English guy with the four eyes. While scamming in general isn't a great thing to do, it's some. Please tell me this guy isn't a singer. If this guy's a singer, this guy sucks at singing, should never be singing any song ever. And maybe if he went to jail, I don't think he, he probably didn't, but if he went to jail, I think he just did the world a favor. Something else entirely to target people more vulnerable to schemes such as the elderly. Yeah. So when Gas Kings, a popular YouTuber known for uploading car compilations, was exposed for scamming retirees of their pensions, people were understandably angry. He oh, yeah. set up a website that claims to invest pensions and would promise a portion to the victim and the rest to a charity supporting environmental causes. Nice or nice or bad reputation. I just want to, like, yeah, I want to, you don't want to take money from the elderly, you want to help the elderly. Because there's, the elderly have trouble at some times as it is living. You want to help them out, not harm them and fucking steal their money. You're so fucked up for this. Fuck you. Fuck you, dude. Tation. He was then pockets the remaining money. Before he was caught, he had reportedly stolen around a million pounds and had scammed over 15 people. He was swiftly charged and sentenced to five years in prison. And long, not, not long enough. Not long enough. I want more. I want to sentence more. Why are you only sentenced to five years? He deserves way more. His YouTube channel was deleted shortly after. Yes. Good, he shouldn't exist. Good. He shouldn't exist. King Bank a cargo. Number 10. Ruslan Sokolovsky. Pokemon Go to Orthodox Church. Oh, yeah, this is the guy who went inside a church to play Pokemon Go, right? I, f I heard about, I was told, I remember I saw this in a video recently. I don't know what the video was. I saw this. I, I heard about this one. This one is. There's a whole different thing, but this one, uh, this one's a, this one made me laugh, actually. Pokemon Go was a craze that swept the world, encouraging kids and adults alike to travel their local areas while trying to catch their favorite Pokemon. The Russian government would prefer that you not catch them all, however, at least not in church. The Russian media had warned that playing Pokemon Go on holy sites could result in jail time. But Russian YouTuber Ruslan Sokolovsky actively challenged this, going to Yekaterinburg's Church of All Saints and broadcasting his adventures to his followers. The YouTuber was given a suspended sentence of three and a half years for inciting religious hatred. I don't know if he's reciting religious hatred. I don't think he's hating on the religion. However, he was. It was. It wasn't like oh, you were told. You can't do it there, and he did it, and then got arrested. No, no, they said, don't play Pokemon Go in churches. Don't play anywhere holy. You could get arrested for this. So then he did it. So, it's still funny. But I have no sympathy for him for it. I have no sympathy for him for it. I have no sympathy for him for it. 
того, в кого верят, то это уже совсем плохо. Number nine. Prince Z. Fake medical emergency. Have you ever been in a situation where you've realized you went too far? Vlogger Prince Z learns this the hard way after attempting a prank in 2021, where he pretended to pass out while driving through Times Square. Does he not understand that he could have actually gotten himself hurt doing this? Does he not understand the risk he took when doing this? Because he easily could have gone himself absolutely... Someone could have hit his car. Someone could have actually done something. He could have gone himself way actually injured doing this. Officers rushed in to help only to find out it was a social media hoax. It's unclear what reaction he was expecting, but it certainly wasn't multiple cops sprinting over. By that point, the YouTuber was in too deep and still pretended to be unconscious as they pulled him out. First responders urgently dragged him to safety, not knowing this was all a setup. Multiple emergency services arrived, and once they found out it was a prank, they were unamused. He was subsequently charged with several crimes, including false reporting and criminal nuisance. Stupid, that's what it is. Number eight. Agreed, agreed. Oh, this guy's an asshole. This guy is a straight up asshole. Oh, I hate this guy so much. Kangua Ren, toothpaste Oreos. Pranks can be a fun way to mess around with your friends. It's a different matter entirely, however, when you target a vulnerable stranger. Reset was a Spanish gaming and challenge YouTuber. In 2017, he decided he was going to prank a homeless man sitting on the street, feeding him Oreos that had the cream replaced with toothpaste. The man threw up after ingesting. This, this is this is disgustingly sick. Oh, I hate this. So I hate these this so much. Them. So Kangua gave the victim 20 euros and then uploaded the video. Naturally, it received a lot of backlash. The prankster wasn't remorseful at all in initial interviews and was eventually arrested. In 2019, he was banned from YouTube, ordered to pay 20,000 euros to the man and sentenced to 15 months in prison. Number seven, Count Dankula. I guess the only reason you could say that makes sense It's because he didn't, um, like the person threw up and that point it wasn't like more harmed, I guess. But yeah, the man did deserve to go, the, uh, the, that guy who did the Oreo thing was a straight asshole. Offensive joke. In 2016, Scottish YouTuber Mac Meachin, aka Count Dankula, decided it would be funny to upload a video of himself training his girlfriend's pug to perform a Nazi salute. He also riled the dog up into reacting to an offensive, anti-Semitic question. This led to his arrest for being grossly offensive, which sparked public debates about freedom of speech. I just want everybody to Well, the freedom of speech been gone for years. Y'all want to make sure that happens. The most of the world doesn't actually want freedom of speech because they don't. They want their opinion, but don't want anyone else's. You don't want freedom of speech. You want you to be co to say your pit Most of you, not everyone. Most. I'm gonna assume most of the people who see my damn stuff probably don't have that mindset because I ain't the guy to be behind if you have this type of mindset. Um, mainly if your thing is, um, if you have a thing where you say your opinion, you just want your opinion to be right, yeah, I don't go by that mindset. No. I like a debate. I love a debate. I want to debate with people all the time. I haven't had chance. I haven't had reasons to. But I love debating with people. Um, it's just, you know... I'm not saying this is charge worthy, so I can't just agree that I should be arrested for it. I don't, I don't agree. It, it's not a funny thing to do. I don't find it funny. I don't find this funny. Teaching a dog how to do a Nazi salute is not funny to me. So, I don't appreciate what he did, but I will say I don't agree he should be arrested for it. 
you know, that I don't actually believe in anything that I was saying in the video. The whole purpose of it was just to annoy my girlfriend. I actually hate racism in any way, shape, or form. Meechin claims that the is there not other ways to annoy your girlfriend than doing that though? Like that's not the way to annoy your girlfriend. There's better ways to do it than this. Video was supposed to make his girlfriend laugh, but the court found this lacked credibility since his girlfriend wasn't subscribed to his channel. He was ordered to pay an 800 pound fine, but refused. I will admit, I'm sorry, that's somewhat funny to me. The fact his girlfriend won't even watch his own videos is funny to me. Because at least I had an action. She watched every one of my videos. Almost too much. She watched every single video and just leave them on playing so I get at least a view. I was appreciated, but I always find it weird also. Used, instead donating the same amount to the Glasgow Children's Hospital Charity. What's funny about that? The context of it is the juxtaposition of having an adorable animal react to something vulgar. That was the entire point of the joke. Have you seen the video? However, £800 was later seized from his bank account. Number 3. Jake Paul. Arrested during riots. This Don't is, do this. this is is my, he's, this is not my dad. he's not five. Yeah. This is my dad. I'm his dad. Okay. This is my dad. Hello. In 2017, Logan was arrested in Italy for flying his drone over historic sites. Uh, drone shots here are illegal, so let's definitely do that. Not to be outdone, in 2018, little brother Jake was sued for $2.5 million for property damage to his rental home. Then in 2020, during the George Floyd protests, he was present during a riot in a mall in Scottsdale, Arizona, leading to charges of criminal trespassing and unlawful assembly. Turn around. We're here for Scottsdale. He claimed he was filming for a future project. The case culminated in the FBI raiding his mansion, after which the charges were dropped. Num okay, so I need context for the riot. Was it like the mall was closed? And they broke in and started the riot? Or was the mall open and then a riot started? Because if the mall was open and a riot started, um... Him being there technically doesn't make him associate. I don't like that thought process. Um, although him filming it with the goal to just upload as a video, which I feel like was the cause, that, yeah, that deserves to be, uh, you, you, that, that probably should be a day, because then you're, that's actually, that, while you're not physically, you, you are encouraging it in some way. Number two, J Station. Fake death leads to abuse allegations. I hate this dude so much with every fiber of my being. This is one of those YouTubers I hate with a passion. There's only very few YouTubers that I legitimately have hatred for that haven't actually, like, because all the YouTubers who killed people, obviously I hate. Or YouTubers that abuse families. Like, I don't, I have hate for them. But I've never, they're not the case where I see the person for the first time and have hatred. He's one of them. There's a few that have caused me to just immediately, from the moment I watch their uh, videos and see about it. Because if it's from Nick Crowley or anything like that, I haven't watched the video. So, my, my hatred is for the whole situation and everyone involved and all, all of that and usually involves the justice system and everything. This is just him himself. And there's only a few others that I don't like that much. I'm not going to say who they are, though. Jason Matthew Ethier. Because, uh... Some YouTubers just like to sue if you, uh... Talk even a little bit bad about him. There was a Canadian YouTuber who became infamous for his pranks and staged... Oh God, he even made his keys, even Canadian. He didn't even, I hate him even more. He made us Canadians even look bad. What an ass. Oh, I hate him even more. 3 a.m. challenges. What's poppin' guys? Back with another 3 a.m. challenge. As you guys know, my girlfriend Alexia just passed away in a tragic accident. In 2018, he was arrested at Walt Disney World for trespassing and resisting arrest. But much worse was to come. This needs to go all over the place. We, he got his stuff stolen, and now they're arresting him. In 2020, he announced that his girlfriend, Alexia Murano, had been killed in an accident with a drunk driver. That's it, right? You know why? I, I, this is what caused the hatred, right? 
This is what caused the hate. Because listen, you get dumped. You got dumped. That's what happened here. This is what happened. He got dumped. And this is how he responded to the girl dumping him. Is he did this as a video. Let me tell you something. This is sickening. And pathetic. And disrespectful. Disgraceful. Whatever you like. Put any word. This is already. A heinous choice of a thing to do. Because. For a thing of content. This is what he chose to do. What follows afterwards. Really. Once I. Fi once you hit. It makes complete sense. Because he looks like someone that would do what's accused of him. There. It's okay man. Everything's gonna be okay. He proceeded to make several videos milk. I, the person who does it with him is also a straight asshole for actually going along with this. ...her death for views where he visited the crash site and even tried to talk to her ghost. Is there any spirits here that wish to talk to us? <gasps> do you see that? Oh my god, it's moving, Jay. Do, 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 do. But she wasn't dead, and the YouTube community... No, she wasn't dead. She just had a ghost. She wasn't a dead. She wasn't had a ghost. She didn't do nothing. She just a, got dumped. She dumped his ass. I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to... Any girl who would actually want to date his ass has already had some trouble. ...was outraged. Morano left him and accused him of abuse, leading to his arrest and charges of assault. Wait, don't tell, tell me. Don't tell me. I may misunderstand. Don't tell me she was with him when he did this, then dumped him. Don't tell me this dipshit is... He's already a low life. Fuck. Don't tell me she... That he did this while he was dating her. Oh, this man deserves... Oh, this man... Oh, I hate this man. I, I didn't know there was a way to make me hate him more. But he did. He found a way. ...and assault with a weapon. And I felt like he was trying to isolate me from my friends, from my family. And I just felt really isolated. This guy, I think she's a very beautiful woman. And... It's sad that that's how... He treated her because she definitely deserves better than that. And alone. He and Murano ended up reuniting soon after, but not for long. Before we can. Wait a minute. Well, hold on. Wait. Murano ended up reuniting. Really isolated and alone. He and Murano ended up reuniting soon after, but not for long. Before we. I can't even get mad because it's an abusive relationship. And abusive relationships are like this. You'll get back together with them. It does happen. It very happens. A lot of toxic relationships, they happen. It's unfortunate. And it's very, it, it's hard to watch. But lucky enough, it wasn't for long and she got away. We continue. Be sure to subscribe. I hope she's doing well now and is in a better relationship because she deserves so much better than that piece of shit. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Rocco Piazza vlogs, child endangerment. This is probably the first time we've done something this illegal. Holly Piazza and Brian Chase were the adults behind the camera of the many adventures of nine-year-old Rocco Piazza. During one of their videos, he and his nanny were buried neck deep in water and Orbeez in the back of a pickup truck. The problem came when his mother drove them out onto the main road. Cars sped by as the pair bobbled around in the back. I feel like it was awesome and people love it and then people hate it, but... You were told to say this kid. Listen, I actually know this kid looks old enough to be stupidly dangerous. This kid looks old enough to be stupidly dangerous. It probably was his idea now that I think about it. Never mind. It's really cool for us. This video, along with another where Holly dumped all the plastic balls on a public road, caught the attention of local law enforcement. 
the couple was arrested for misdemeanor child endangerment and charged the cost of the subsequent cleanup. It's time for people to know the truth. In all fairness, that's not actually, uh... It's probably not that much. I don't know if that's super lot of money, but I'm, I might be wrong. But, yeah, that, that, that's stupid. Yeah. About YouTube, that we don't exploit children. We don't, we're not mm -hmm. treating him wrong or doing anything against his will. Did you enjoy? You can't do a video explaining that you're not doing anything against his will if you're sitting next to him in an interview. Because no one's going to admit the truth while you're sitting right there if you're a parent who does makes the child do stuff. No child's going to say that openly if you're sitting right there. So that's, that's stupid. Um, but anyways, that is it for this reaction video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hit the like button, hit subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.